Hi, this is Roseanne from the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Programs. I am an enrollment coach with something called Project 90, and I'm also a client journey coach in the same program. I'm going to be sitting in for James today on this podcast, but I'm excited to be here with Liz Valicente from the Boston area. She's a marketing executive, and we're going to talk about this journey of hers that helped her learn how to trust herself. Her life has changed so much over the last hundred days or so, and I'm excited for her to start sharing some of that with you, with you all. So, hi, Liz. Welcome. Hi, Roseanne. So nice to see you. <laughs> nice to have you here. Let's just start with how many days alcohol-free are you? I'm actually 93. So I just hit my 90 days. Wow. Uh, well, because I've watched your journey, I've seen a whole lot of change and um, I am excited to give you the opportunity to talk about all these things that changed in your very short journey, actually 92 days. Um, let's just start with, I, I don't know, your drinking habits. I usually like to start with drinking habits and how they developed over time, maybe. When did you start drinking? Um, I think I had my first drink at 16. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, alcohol was kind of always around, but I don't think I was, it wasn't really something I even thought about most of my life. Um, I think I was always some, uh, I drank alcohol because it was fun and I wanted more fun. And I think the, I think just as I got older, maybe the last five years, maybe after my divorce, um, a lot more time being alone. And I think therefore going out more. Um, I think it just it just became more of a habit. And as you get older, you really can't process the uh, toxins and poisons from alcohol. And it was just became more of a health issue for me. I think I just decided I don't I don't want to lose any days because I'm not feeling well. Um, I don't want to be my you know a hundred percent. And I just realized, you know, especially during COVID, the extra a little bit you know a little bit more alcohol involved when you know there was really right. nothing to do, and it just it just didn't serve me. And I just really wanted to make a change. But so, it, I think primarily it was it was health. Um, I'm a plant-based eater primarily. Mm -hmm. um, I do try to keep as healthy as I can. I mean, my motivation is really to be around for my, my three boys and their families. And I just, I just wanted to be the, the healthiest I can. And this was just, it's like, I kept reading about, um, you know, studies that show even two glasses of wine a day for women could increase the chances of certain cancers by 30%. I thought, well, why am I doing this? Why can't I, you know, I need to be healthier. Right. And I, I find it interesting that you mention, um, you know, because many of us are drinking is um, rooted not only in just that fun thing, but I think you're mentioning a divorce, some kind of experience that we maybe used alcohol to self-medicate with. Would you say that that's when um, um, drinking kind of got a little bit more habitual, I guess? No, actually, I think it was celebratory. It was oh. seriously, like I actually felt free um, for the first time in a long time. And so it, I really was drinking in like more of a joyous state. When I when I felt really good is when I would drink. Wow. Um, and then of course you awesome. feel terrible the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then but it, you know, but the fact the fact is it really it made you feel worse, not better. Do you want to so. tell people what you what your career um, focused on? Because I think your career and drinking kind of generally go hand in hand, right? Um I think. You know, for me, I, I think I worked so, so many hours that, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I mean, what was your career? Um, I was, work, I worked for um, a golf company for 28 years and they were long hours. Like I definitely 12, 15 days. I, it was digital marketing. So I was on call all the time. It was very, very stressful. 
Um, so I definitely like on weekends would be like, okay, I got, I need to relax for sure. Um, but were you out on the golf course a lot drinking or? Uh... No, no, actually, um, just in the last year, um, <laughs> during COVID I've played an awful lot of golf and yes, just recreationally, not with my work recreationally, a uh, lot of drinking on the golf course and afterwards hanging out with, you know, everybody at the club. So yeah, that this, this spring and summer, there was a lot. And I think that probably led me to making the choice in November to go P90. Yeah, for sure. And before you were drinking uh, while golfing, you were drinking more, more on Friday and Saturday nights to have fun. And was that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, it just becomes a habit and it's more, you know, it's more than that. And it might be only one or two glasses of wine, but it becomes a habit. And then you're just like, well, what's my, what's my normal self? You know, who am I? Who am I without alcohol? I think that was always, that was always a question is like, am I, am I really, am I my being my best version of myself? And, I, and then the answer to that was no, absolutely not. And, you know, why, what did, that why did you believe that? Why did you believe you were uh, the best version of yourself? Um, I don't think I was progressing in my career as much as I wanted to. Um, I think I was tired. Um, definitely lack of confidence in myself and my abilities. Um, I, I definitely started thinking that, oh, I'm getting towards the end of my life meaning, you know, end of the career that everything's, it's like, oh, I just didn't have any hope for the future. I just felt like, um, everything's kind of on the, on the downward trajectory. Right. And I was accepting, I was accepting that in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, my next job, it's really not going to be that good. Oh, you're not really good enough. Those little stories that I was telling myself, well, that's okay. Just get a job to pay the bills and then you'll move to Florida and then you'll have, you'll play golf with the ladies and then you'll, you know, have your four o'clock cocktails. And in my mind, I was telling myself that story and it, it, it didn't feel very good. <laughs> it didn't. I was like, well, I don't want to do that. Um, and I think it was, to, you know, once I get into P90, that's when I was like, oh, wow, I don't have to have that. I don't like see my future. Yeah. Right. And um, when Liz mentions P90, she means our Project 90 um, yeah, program. And um, for those that may be just listening and can't see, Liz is of an undisclosed age with three <laughs> children, ages. Well, I, yeah, I didn't want James to disclose mine either. Um, 24, 22, and 20, just to get mm -hmm. some relative that you could be, you know, 40, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I could. And she looks 40. And, and like I said, for those who might not be able to see her because you're listening to the podcast, somebody referred to her as looking like Vera Fawcett. So she's. Oh, really? Yes, you I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. I, I <laughs> so <laughs> this is quite beautiful. And oh, thank I, you. I think yeah. that is important, uh, quite beautiful, quite sweet. Um, yet, you lacked the self-confidence. And I, I just find yeah. that interesting. Um, now that you're alcohol free, if you look back, would you say that alcohol played a role in your lack of self-confidence? Um, I think at the beginning, probably alcohol, you know, I, I, I drank to make me feel less self secure, self, um, conscious. Um, yeah, definitely. So to release yeah. your inhibitions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's no question. Um, and yeah, that probably my whole life. Yeah, just kind of. Yeah, I was very, very shy. Believe it or not, Roseanne. <laughs> and no. uh, that <laughs> that helped me get through things. So liquid confidence. So. Yes, for sure. All right, so let's transition to the point if you can remember where you went. Oh wait a minute, I want to stop, but this is a little harder than I thought. When, when did that? Yeah. So I think probably a few times over the last three or four years, I think I would really listen to people that had made the decision to, um, you know, just to remove alcohol from their lives. And they seem to be just doing so well, so healthy, so confident, really growing in their um, careers. And I just, you know, 
I would just really tune in when I heard someone. So I would try and I would say, well, at least I'll just not drink at all during the week and, and then drink on the weekends. But you know, all you need is one night of drinking three or four glasses of wine and then you're feeling terrible again. Um, and what was happening was when I was making that commitment to myself and failing, I was getting that kind of guilt and shame. Like I can't even trust myself to do what I want to do. That's when it, I, I didn't want to keep doing that because that really lowered my self-esteem even more. So when I did hear about project 90 and I actually had, I think I'd signed up for, uh, I was years ago. Um, I don't even know what the program was called with James, but um, I just didn't do it. I, you know, I started it, but it didn't follow through. So I'd been getting a lot of the emails and, and, and I listened to some podcasts and I think it, I actually listened to a podcast, I think in October, maybe it was in October. And it was a, a man from the Boston area. And there's something about um, his story that just resonated with me. I think he was in marketing. He's around my age, you know, family and all the reasons that he talked about that he had um, everything that he had achieved in his 90 days was just like almost everything that I was looking for in my life. And so that really got me um, to to make a call. Right. And, and well, it is, kind of, it is kind of miraculous. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but I can't I can't wait to start talking to you about the changes in this short amount of time. Um, so you start recognizing um, that, wow, this is kind of difficult to control it starts affecting your self-confidence because you can't keep your word. I guess in, in Project 90, we like to say, you know, it's a problem keeping integrity with yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, my new word for it was, uh, now that I can look at it in the rearview mirror, is psychological ball and chain. Uh, is, that, is that a good representation? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um you weren't a big drinker though. I mean, had you considered AA or anything like that or? Do you know what? I did that for a little bit with one of my friends because I just wanted to, I just wanted to try anything. I was like, I, I never felt like I did connect. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't, I couldn't connect with any of the stories. It just wasn't it wasn't something I could relate to. And I kept thinking there's got to be something else. There's got to be people like me. Right. that just want to improve their life and and become you know healthier and and just something with a little support to get you through it because i never it was never a physical craving of any kind it was emotional and it was habit it was right. ha complete habit right so 93 or 2 days ago you um decided to uh join Project 90 and take alcohol out of your life. And you entered into a coaching program. And I and I have to say, Liz, I'm just going to say this as a, a coach who watched you. I mean, you were all in, absolutely all in. You, you heard the story, you listened to the podcast, you wanted results, and you dove in head first. So mm -hmm. let's talk about those beginning days of being on yeah. um I was I just said I'm going to participate as much as I can I went on as many zoom calls as I could I went on Marco Polo like almost every day tell people what Marco um, Polo is because not everybody so knows Marco Polo is an app that anybody can use but it's utilized um in our group project 90 to communicate back and forth and it's it's like um Oh, it's it's just a it's a video app and people can um, speak to it and everybody else can listen to it on their own time and then people can respond back. Um, so it's great. It really works out for a group with um, all over the world because anybody can tune in to listen to everybody's Marco Polo stories at any time. And it's just so much better than just audio or text because you can really see people. Um, you can see where, you know, just what do they look like? What are they experiencing? And really listen. It's, um, it really is a fabulous. I, I've actually, um, because of this, I started my college roommates is about seven of us. 
And we, I said, you guys just give this a try. It was just like, it's unbelievable yeah. how it has changed our relationships. Cause we're all over the, the country as well. It's, it's a really cool app. It really yeah, is. I agree. I think we're doing a, them a lot of good and in increasing their <laughs> revenue base. Um, oh. Although the app is free, but I think even yes. a, a year, a year round subscription is pretty cheap. But um, so talk about, I mean, what did you, what are the things that you took away from your experience in there? Um, after the 90 days? No, during, right, let's, let's just yeah. start at oh, the beginning because it it's not, it's not, you seem to make it look easy. Um, you know, I, I remember you coming on early on and going, oh, I'm here. It's easy. I mean, first of all, can we talk about why you believe that it was easier for you than maybe other people? Do you, do you want to share? I don't, I, I mean, I definitely know it was the support of the community of Project 90 members. Um, I definitely think because I participated I was just, I really was all in. I mean, I listened to uh, Kevin on the coaching calls and the Zoom calls and on the one-on-ones. I really, really, I felt like I was just a student and absorbing everything I possibly could because I quickly realized this, this wasn't about alcohol. No. This is about me, uh, about um, growing as a, I mean, I tell people, oh, I'm doing this um, personal and professional uh, coaching program. I don't even say anything about alcohol. If someone asks me, I just say, well, we all have one thing in common. We're trying to take alcohol out of our lives or we are taking alcohol out of our lives, but it, it's, um, it's just so much more. And it is definitely the support of the community. I really connected with so many people and it didn't matter where they were in the world, what gender, what age, what it, it just, you just can connect. We all had one thing, you know, the one thing in common and there's just, there's no judging. So right from the beginning, I felt like I could share anything about myself, um, my struggles, uh, my hopes and dreams. Um, and I got the support right. that I needed to keep going. And, and honestly, alcohol was, I think after the, I don't know, first two weeks, I didn't, I really didn't think about it that much. I was too excited about the growth that I was already seeing in my life. Well, talk about this. um, And and I love the fact that you bring up the coaching because it really, a lot of people unfortunately associate it with other maybe programs um, like AA and AA is successful for people. And so I don't want to knock what's successful but they're talking about alcohol in there. So a lot of people think that our discussions are around alcohol, but they're almost around everything but alcohol, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right, because this, yeah, this isn't, I'm sorry, I was, no, no, I was just ahead. excited that this isn't a program, uh, this isn't about depriving you, yourself of alcohol. It's not about t- someone taking something away or saying you can't have something. This is about upgrading your life and get in, and getting in, um, getting so many things in return. And it's, it's just, you're upgrading in every part of your life. So it's like, get it. It's not about deprivation. It's about gaining so many more things. Right. So you made a lot of really big decisions um, mm-hmm. in the course of 90 days. And um, I remember a post you did about mid mid cycle 45, but first let's talk about these giant decisions yeah. you made and how it affected your life and maybe how you came to those decisions in the midst of putting alcohol yeah. to the side. Well, Kevin really helped me uh, realize through his teachings of um, Dr. David Hawkins using that, the cone of consciousness where um, there are contracted and expanded states and down in the contracted states, where a really low vibration level are anger, fear, shame, and it's contracted. You're feeling really like you don't know, you you can't even see outside of your, the hole that you're in. I was living, I know I was living in that area, that state for about three years. And he, he just, in just the teachings and I actually 
got the book Power Versus Force, um, which which goes through this this cone and really ex- explains it more in detail. And I just realized I have to get myself out of this contracted state. And with the help of Kevin and, and just Project 90, I really did. I started to come out of that contracted state um, using acceptance, willingness, um, letting go, letting attachments go to the anger and fear, whether it was re- related to resentment of you know my ex-husband or of a job and a boss or something. And as I started to do that work and really let it go, I started moving up that cone of consciousness um, into a much more expanded state. So then when I was confronted with making choices to try to move forward, because I was still like, I, got, I, I have to do something. I was in a job that I was, it was not the right one for me. Um, and during COVID, it actually just really, um, it, it, it was hit hard. Um, but I was staying there because of so much fear of the unknown behind that, but it was making me miserable. So, you know, Kevin really helped me um, just get that, feel that freedom um, to make the choice. And I made the choice. I re- I removed myself from that situation. At the same time, there was something else that was really keeping me in a contracted state. Um, I had been thinking about selling my home for about five years couldn't make that decision. I couldn't come to it again. It's because I wasn't thinking clear. I was living in that state of, well, well, what happens if I move? What are my kids never going to come see me? Well, what happens if I get a job in a different place? All of these things that I had no control over because they hadn't happened. The only thing that I had control over was right here, right now. And what choices am I going to make? And what really is, what was the best choice for me, for my family? for my life. And so I, I made the choice really quickly to sell my house and I'm in the middle of it right now. And I'm actually grateful that I'm unemployed right now because there's no way I could do this. So well, I was going to say I, you quit your job yeah. too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I quit. I left the job. <laughs> yeah. I decided. So here I am. I'm unemployed for the first time in many, many years, my whole life. Um, I've always had a job. Um, selling my house that I've been in for 22 years and it's where my kids grew up and all that. And I've never been more at peace and, and so much gratitude and, and just joy in my life. And I'm not scared about my future. I'm not wondering what will happen. I'm just at this point where I'm just going to make the choices when they're, when I'm confronted with them. Um, I'm, I'm, looking for a job. But if I don't get an interview, it does not hit me in any way because I'm thinking, well, it wasn't the right thing for me. And I'm just moving forward, constantly making choices because I'm in that expanded state. I'm not at pure, pure, pure joy. And yeah, but I'm, I'm, you know, some, there's some days when I'm, I'm feeling pretty high on that uh, level of consciousness. I I mean, Liz, you are like saying some pretty big things for people to hear it because we, I lived in that contracted state too. And <laughs> sometimes people listen to the podcast and they're like, I don't believe this is happening. <laughs> these are just <laughs> like, yeah, these are just stories. But I mean, this is a pretty big deal. Um, these are two major life decisions that you have made inside 90 with confidence and um acceptance and Mm -hmm. it's it's a really big deal um yeah i think this is when you did your like transitional post like wow (laughs) you want to share what you felt after you made those decisions yeah i think it was on day 45 i just happened to write down like oh midway through um my 90 days what have i what have I upgraded in my life? How am I feeling? And I, it was, um, I have it written down here somewhere, but, um, it was more confidence, um, more productivity, more trust in myself. Um, just, um, just a willingness to, to make choices and stick by them. I don't know. What else did I say? Roseanne, they're just so, it was like just so um, phenomenal. You provided so much hope for hope. so many people. Oh, 
Yeah. Can I tell you, can I touch on that a little if I just didn't? Please do. I, it, as I said, I before I started this, I really thought that my life was on a downhill trajectory, that this is it. I've already hit my peak. Um, you know, I'll probably never meet someone that I'm going to share the rest of my life with because I'm on that downhill. I'll probably not get the job. All of these real, these stories that were just in my head. And now I can 100% say that I have so much hope for my future. I'm looking forward to everything. Again, I have no fears. I really don't. It's like, it's such a uh, light, airy, peaceful feeling to just not have that fear of the unknown. And instead it's hope and it's excitement. And, and I, and I'm not trying to control anything. I did a, I did a podcast with Danny, I don't know, four or five episodes back. And that was like, okay, I'm ready to, I was, I'm around the same age, a little older than you, but, um, you know, I was in a downward spiral too. And just thinking I had no more to give the world. And now it's like, the world is my oyster. Okay. It opens yes. up like, Oh my gosh, where am I going to go? Where am I going to be? Who cares? It's, yeah. it's fun. You know, I trust it and uh, the opportunity and yeah, all that inside 93 days. That's actually for yeah. you it happened at about day 45. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, if anybody is listening to this and they're thinking about, you know, but doing it, I, I can just say from my experience, this is uh, one of the most transformational um, periods of my life mm-hmm. that I, that I've ever had. I mean, I really can't th- look back and think of anything else that really um, that I gained so much growth in such a short period of time and, and growth that I know is going to be with me forever. This isn't going away. This is just the start. Um, it's 90 days, but boy, it's like, this is just the start of continual growth in my life. Right. And because I can see that now I can actually see it. That, wow. There's so much more now to look forward to in my life. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's, it's fun to watch. Okay. So I want to transition because <laughs> She knows where I'm going. Okay, everybody. I think I do. Uh, okay, everybody. Because Liz is single. Actually, I'm single mm-hmm. too. But we both shared a few dating stories, but yours were far yes. better. Um, <laughs> and far better and far, I don't know, they just provided some really valuable lessons. And I just think they can be so important for people listening too, who are... Um, you know, find themselves divorced and single and, um, you know, what does life look like now in an alcohol-free dating world? And Liz, you shared a few stories with us. So I'm hoping I did. maybe you have more to share us share now. So yeah. To everyone's entertainment, I did. I was very vulnerable and I was able to um, communicate a, a, my experiences. Um, First of all, the reason I I wanted to date, it was very intentional. Um, and it was I really only started probably, I don't know, a few weeks ago, kind of going back to dating. I wasn't at all, I think, the first 60 days or something on Project 90. Um, but I wanted to be intentional because I knew I would have the support of the group. And I knew that it, um, dating was kind of a trigger for alcohol meaning it was just expected you own a, a date for drinks you're gonna have a cocktail so um I, there were a cup there was one guy that i had had a date with this summer and it was um it was golf and it was dinner and we, we you know it was probably 12 hour date and i think we probably started drinking on the golf course and at the time i remember thinking, well, okay, I'm not really sure about this guy, but I was having fun. I mean, playing golf and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So for whatever reasons, COVID, we only, we got together and um, had a date about a month ago. And I'm not going to go elaborately into all the details, but after about an hour, I realized that I was criticized probably 10 times. Um, He was a very negative person. I did everything wrong. And I was like, 
I had, I spent 12 hours with this guy. And by the end of the night, he told me I was walking like a duck because I had a hip issue. And he said, well, you know why you have an issue? I said, no, why? He said, well, because you walk like a duck. <laughs> I finally said, oh my God, I have to go. But the lesson that I did learn was the only difference between the summer date and this date was that I was alcohol free. And how did I not see what was truly there? And the only thing I can think of was alcohol clouded my judgment. I wasn't really in tune to everything. I probably was like, oh, whatever. Um, but the other thing too, I I think is I, when I used to date, it was my question would be, oh, I wonder if they'll like me. Will they like me? What do I need to do to change who I am mm. to make that guy like me? And that's not the way it is now. Um, I'm looking for authenticity from me and for whoever I'm dating and and getting to know the real person. And um, I mean, it's 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 a little bit huh, it's hard to accept that, you know, that's the way I was dating. That I really, you know that I was more concerned about whether someone would like me than me being myself. But it's a, um, it's an important realization. And, you know, uh, I, again, the difference is that alcohol was right. involved before. It really is. And yeah, so I've had about four dates and they haven't been as bad. Oh, as that four first dates. One. Okay. Yeah. And two, two with men that I had dated and it was like, wow, I'm really not interested in these guys anymore. Um, I'm much more interested in, in really, I, I just said authenticity, someone being their true self, um, a little bit more depth than maybe I had, 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 um, been drawn to before. I mean, it's just, um, I just wasn't making the right choices for myself. Right. I don't think I was thinking in that way. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Cause I think that resonates <laughs> with me as well Is that. You just, there's so much more clarity in going out with a date and understanding, um, you know, and maybe not moving in so fast too, because your inhibitions mm. are are reduced, which is kind of sometimes what we want on a date, but it's, it's a very different dance, <laughs> you know, when, uh, yeah. when we don't have to have alcohol in the mix. So um, yeah. how about your relationship with your children? Did that do you recognize the change in in that? I it's so hard because none of them really they don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I mean, they're. I feel like it's better because I'm certainly not. I'm much steadier in my um, just to, with who I am. I mean, I'm I'm much more patient. Um, I think I'm a much better listener. Um, I'm not, I don't, um, react anywhere near as quickly as I used to, I think, to whatever they might be doing. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? I I realized that I, I don't know about you, but I used to feel that I was a really impatient person because I used to react. But then when I took away the alcohol, I'm not saying I never react, but it's, it's a whole nother ball game. Do you find that yeah. as well? Oh my gosh. Just everything is, I'm just more even, um, really more at peace. Actually, one of the funniest things I've really noticed, I used to have to drive like 35,000 miles um, a year. And I was always in a rush. Like always, there was always some place I had to go. I was driving so fast all the time and annoyed with people. I find myself sometimes driving so slowly that... Even my kids were like, Mom, why are you driving so slowly? I'm like, oh, Emma, are you st- <laughs> I'm just so relaxed and I don't care if someone's dr- going to bed. I just, I just let all that go. I really you are, did. You are truly smelling the roses as you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. That is funny. Oh. I love that. I love that. And then what do you think's going on? So you're in the midst of selling your house. Um, Mm -hmm. How, how does, what's your approach now about opportunity moving forward and potential jobs or entrepreneurship? What what are you doing? What are you going to do about that? 
Yeah. I've had to fight the, um, my, you know, the little voice in my head saying, oh, you have to get a job that's, you know, um, a really high profile, um, you know, stressful, big girl job <laughs> because that's what you're supposed to do. And I'm, and then I'm like, do I, is that what I need to do? And because you feel like almost your self-worth, um, revolves around that, you know, everybody said, what do you do? What do you do? And so I'm, I am, I'm fighting that, but where I'm definitely leading now is I am going to explore a lot of different opportunities. I'm going to be, I'm open to any discussions with anyone. And I have, oh my gosh, right before we, we got on here, Roseanne, I actually had an email from um, an HR person from one of the Project 90 um, members right now that had mentioned that their company was hiring. And I have an interview next week. Wow. And I've, I have a number of those things, again, just for networking, you know, either with P90 people or just, you know, putting myself out there. I'm doing a mentoring program right now and meeting tons of people. And I really am just, you know, I'm just open to everything. And I do know because I trust myself um, and I, I, I don't know. I, I've got a gut feel for things that I, you know, I, I guess it's a combination of intuition and experience when you get that gut feel, but I just know when something's going to be right. And right now I have the, I have no problem saying, no, that's not right for me. That's not, that doesn't feel good where I think, uh, I know a year ago I took a job because I was like, Oh, they want me. Oh, I better take this. Who, who else is going to want me right now? I know I'm going to say, that's, that's not a good fit or that's a good fit. And I'm also not driven by money. I need to make money, of course, but I'm not, that's not the only thing. It's not about a title. It's not about money. It's like, is this something I'm going to be able to add value? Is it going to, am I going to be fulfilled doing it? Can I help other people? It's just a completely different approach right now. It, it really is. And you've been such an inspiration to so many people. I guess I, <laughs> I don't know if you were surprised or not by all the love that you got at the end of our, um, you know, when we get to 90 days, we kind of celebrate people and a meeting and um, recognize your, your journey. We talk about you on Marco Polo. Um, you want to talk about how that felt at the end? I think, well, I think you were surprised, right? I was. And it's funny because I think, um, well, it was last night um, for us. And uh, this morning, I just, I think I, I said, well, it was a Liz love fest last night. I was just <laughs> overwhelmed by the kind words. And, you know, what people said about me, it, I haven't internalized it. I don't look, think of myself as wonderful as people have said I am. But boy, that helps. It's it's helping me get to that place of really, truly liking myself. Um, I'll get there. Right now, I'm not there, but it certainly helps. And yeah, it's, you know, I really have made some incredible friends. And someone said it like, you know, these are this is real. Our friendships on Project Ninety are real, and I absolutely agree. It does not matter that we have not seen each other in real life. I guarantee you, there's a a number of people in this program that I will meet in real life as soon as COVID's over. I, right. I absolutely 100% believe that. And there's also people here that I know for the rest of my life, I will be able to call up and ask, you know, if I ask for support, they will be there. I just know it. Yeah. I know it in my heart and I believe it. And wow, how spe special is that? Yeah. I mean, that's in this world, that is just unbelievable. I think. I, I agree. Um, we've talked about it in some prior podcasts too, is just the the essence of doing something in a community <clears throat> gives people much power. Um, and yeah. just that community, I think for this particular community to be open about um, struggles, realizations, uh, you know, and people are inspirational, right? It's yeah. And when you were starting, you were inspired by people 80 days in front of you. 
going, wow, yeah. I want that. And now you're the person that's inspiring people like, wow, Liz, I didn't know you that much, but what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like this perpetual snowball that, that is happening in there. And it's really, yeah. really nice. Um, so before yeah. we wrap up, is there anything you feel like you learned in your alcohol free journey not necessarily you know as a result of project 90 but just you know just in life about you know how this is really an opportunity as opposed to missing something like do you think you're missing out on anything anymore by not drinking no i've gained so much absolutely nothing i no i've gained so much by choosing to be alcohol free. Um, and every day I'm alcohol free is another day that um, it's, it's a win. And it's, um, you know, it's just something that I can look back to and just say, Hey, I always have that. I'm alcohol free for 93 days. And, my life has been upgraded so much. Yeah, I never feel like I never feel like um Do you feel like admit- you need to explain like how do you explain to people? Um I, well I guess it's middle of winter, you haven't had to golf without alcohol, but how do you Yeah. Oh no, I've been out a ton with people. Okay. And oh I yeah, I will just say, Oh, I'm I'm not drinking and and oh how come? It's like oh because I want to be healthy and it's the best thing I've ever done. And what's great is every time I've gone out, I've had a ball and I don't care if anyone else is drinking, but I definitely can see, um, you know, I can see the effects and I'm, I wake up feeling great the next day. And every time I do that, it's like a win, it's a win. And then it, it's, um, it just helps me the next, for the next time. It's like, Oh, I've done this. Oh, I've done this five times. Okay. Now I'm, I'm alcohol free. I can still go out. I still have so much fun with my friends and, um, well, you've, I'm done free. This, you've done this through some of the bigger times, right? The, yeah. the holidays were you, did you start before Thanksgiving? Yes, I did. Okay. So November you went 12th, through Thanksgiving, yeah. Christmas, yep. New mm-hmm. Year's and Super Bowl. Any problems yep. there? None. <laughs> exactly. None. No. It just, it wasn't even a question. Right. I'm just not going to drink. That's awesome. Liz, thank you for being an inspiration. And I hope we get to do a part two in the future and watch how this confidence, uh, I I mean, the, the really cool thing about you and your journey is Rarely do we get somebody who's made so many life changes. Well, not rarely. People are making a lot of life changes, right? But you, you know, as a single executive that is, you know, is looking for a new path and a new home and a new, you know what I mean? And just to be so confident, that's just off the charts, really inspirational. So I can't wait what the next year is going to bring. Like, I just know it's going to be unbelievable. Well, if it's anything like mine, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it's, it's this opportunity keeps knocking because, you know, that your joy is shining through and it's just infectious. And so thank you. Thank you for um, for doing this and providing, uh, you know, people hope. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Roseanne and Kevin and James. It's really just been unbelievable. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. 
If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple Podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.